Hey everybody, welcome back to Bob Key TV. It's time once again for the predictions uh, for 2018. I'm going to do two videos about that, whereby I review my 2017 picks. Oh baby, uh, uh, that will uh, make you a little hot under the collar uh, if you're a pundit of the sport. Uh, but I feel free in the comment section to make your predictions. And then I'll do another video with my predictions for 2018. 2017, Milano Sanremo, Fernando Gaviria. He was my man, finished fifth. Um, a three-man breakaway was able to hold off the field. Does not happen very often, but when you look at the quality of riders in the breakaway that came together at the top of the pojo, the last climb, Peter Sagan, Julian Alaphilippe, and Michael Kwiatkowski. <laughs> they stayed away. Gavi, my guy, Second in the field sprint, finished fifth, uh, so not bad, uh, but Kwiatkowski just barely getting the better of Peter Sagan. A very clever ride by Michael Kwiatkowski. Sat on Sagan. He knew Sagan, once he had committed, would have to do the lead out so that the peloton chasing would not catch. And uh, I, it, it's tough. If you're Peter Sagan in that particular tactical situation, if you wait for the group, you lose. If you do all the tempo, all the work on the front, Kwiatkowski might beat you. He took the gamble on being able to be a little bit faster than Kwiatkowski, even though he did all the work, but Kwiatkowski got the better of Sagan in Milan San Remo. Um, Ronda van Vlaanderen, the Tour of Flanders. I had John Dagenkolb. He wound up seventh. Um, that was won by Philippe Gilbert with a, I think, 55-kilometer solo in the finale, helped by the crash by Sagan, Greg Van Avermaet, and Olivier uh, Nason. Uh, Sagan tangling with the jacket, I believe, of one of the spectators, uh, and taking <laughs> all three riders in the chase group down simultaneously. And that was enough for Philippe Gilbert to stay away to the finish line. But a great win. you got to hand it to Phil Gil. That was incredible. Perry Roubaix, Greg Van Avermaet, a week later after Vlandevin, getting redemption with a huge win in Perry Roubaix. Sagan flatting in the finale. I had Sagan winning it. Uh, we'll get to my 2018 predictions in, in the next video. But uh, Greg Van Avermaet, a great win. Giro di Lombardia, I thought Vincenzo Nibali would attack on the climbs and the descents in the finale and win. <laughs> And that is exactly what happened. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Let's go to the Grand Tours. Giro, I had Nairo. Nairo uh, winning another Giro title. Uh, that did not happen. He had the lead going into the final time trial, but a storming, deserving new superstar of the Grand Tours. Tom Dumoulin getting the better of Nairo Quintana. And Tom Dom, whoo, man, hung tough in the mountains. Had some... Had some difficult days. It <laughs> made for a very exciting race, but uh, Nairo was no match for Tom Dumoulin in the final time trial. And he would have need he would have needed a much bigger lead going into that to keep Tom Dumoulin uh, from catching and passing him, which is exactly what happened. And Tom Dom, now a big superstar, generally um, Nibali, Froome, Quintana, the proven Grand Tour winners currently. Um, and now there's a new name to add to the list, so I'm delighted to include Tom Dumoulin. Whatever Grand Tour he does, he's a favorite to win. It's awesome. Tour de France, Froome Dog, no surprise there. Just destroyed everybody. <laughs> Very impressive ride. Also impressive that I didn't expect Rigoberto Uran, second place. Bardet, barely hanging on to third. That's your podium from the Tour. Um, Bardet, not a huge surprise, been on the podium before, um, but Rigo, Berto, Uran, from what was the Cannondale squad, podium in the tour, it's freaking awesome. That will be a new team, review all of that in the weeks to come on Bobki TV, stay tuned. Um, but Chris Froome, dominant in the tour, also, uh, and I picked Froome for the tour win, I mean, he'd be insane not to, uh, just obviously the best stage racer of the current generation generation, and uh, whatever Grand Tour he tries to win, he usually does. <laughs> Vuelta, I thought of Esteban Chavez after an incredible year in 2016 would be the man to beat in the Vuelta. I was wrong about that. It was Froome again. Whether or not he holds on to that title depends on how the UCI adjudicates his Salbutamol case, which is currently, 
I'm sure everybody's seen and heard and read tons of about it. More on that to come. Uh, and Chavez finished 11th, so if Froome gets disqualified, he'll move up one place <laughs> into the top 10. But I'll tell you this. If Froome is disqualified from the Volta, which I think is the appropriate sanction, the appropriate penalty, Matteo Trentin, if I'm not mistaken, will get the green jersey, which he, he deserves four stages. Froome, and I said this during the coverage of the Volta, Froome is being too greedy. Why do you need the green jersey as well as the red jersey of race winner? And Froome going for it all the line. On the line in Madrid, the last stage of the Vuelta, Trentin won the stage. He won four stages. He was the most consistent rider in the Vuelta. <laughs> the point system is so cattywampus, uh, is so off kilter and skewered towards skewed. I think is right word <laughs> towards the GC riders. I was just a complete perfect storm against Matteo Trentin. But in the end, justice might prevail. We shall see. <laughs> World's Kristoff, Norway, superstar, not riding that great, had a chance to redeem himself after a couple of disappointing seasons and was just barely denied by Peter Sagan. Sagan, third title in, in a row. I don't, feel, I don't feel like my pick was that bad and uh, um, because Kristoff barely lost. I didn't think Sagan, after a full season, um, would have still had the ambition to go for the Worlds also. But because of what happened at the Tour, which no one could have predicted, if you said, if you predicted that Peter Sagan was going to win the green jersey in the Tour de France, that would not have been a shock to anybody. But that did not happen. Michael Matthews was the man. Uh, and he was third in the world. So Kristoff, second, my pick. I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> in the women's race, Megan Garnier, I believe she crashed and uh, was unable to contend for the win. The team, the American team, very solid, but the Dutch team was absolutely spectacular. Annemiek van Vluten, um, uh, Marianne Voss, Anna van der Bregen, incredible team. And the most opportunistic, Chantal Black, getting the win. Of course, her teammates are not going to chase her, and no one else had the power to close it down. Corn Rivera, outside chance for the win for the United States, and the team was pretty spectacular. Lauren Stevens had a great Worlds, but could not quite match the firepower of the Dutch. That was 2017. I'm going to try to do better for 2018, be a little bit more accurate. It's very tough, though. <laughs> if I would have said Peter Sagan's going to win the green jersey, I will bet the farm on that. I will eat my hat if he doesn't. I would have been wrong. Uh, so, uh, but it's fun to speculate on who's going to do well. And thanks for watching these. And uh, thumbs up. Greatly appreciated. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter to get updates when these videos are going to uh, be posted. So thanks a lot, everybody, for uh, watching Bobkey TV. Have a great 2018. Be careful out there. Keep your helmets rocking and uh, keep watching Bobkey TV. Thanks a lot.